Hello and welcome back to Supply Chain Management. In the last module, you looked at aggregate planning. And aggregate planning was all about manipulating capacity. In this module, we're going to talk about sales and operations planning, which is manipulating demand. So right now you have forecasting, which was an input for aggregate plan. An aggregate plan is then an input into sales and operations plan. So we know that predictable variability is the change in demand that can be forecasted. Remember, this is the part which we can forecast it. And we had the unpredictable part, which is the error. And this variability can cost increased cost and decrease responsiveness in the supply chain. If you go back to my early lecture, we talked about how responsiveness becomes really important and that you know the more responsive you have to create a, a supply chain, the less efficient, efficient it becomes. So this variability in demand actually will affect responsiveness and to create the responsiveness, if we decide to be more responsive, uh, it will increase the costs. So there are two broad approaches, and you have already seen one, which is aggregate plan, which is we manage supply using capacity, inventory, subcontracting, and backlogs. But we can also uh, manage demand using short-term pricing discounts and trade promotions, and that's really what we're going to see in this particular lecture. So let's review how we manage capacity. We manage capacity using the time flexibility from workforce, basically uh, overtime, and then underutilize the workforce. You can use seasonal workforce, subcontracting. We could actually do dual facilities. You could have specialized facilities which make only one type of product. And then you have for surge peak demand, you could use flexible facilities which could change what they do. And you can actually incorporate product, product flexibility into the production process. You could manage supply by managing inventory using common components across multiple products. You can build inventory of high demand or predictable demand products. And we also looked at the inventory and capacity trade-off. So you can actually have a level capacity, not changing your production, have a flat production, but this forces inventory to build up in anticipation of seasonal variation in demand and when demand starts growing, you start using your inventory to satisfy that demand. Or you could vary capacity with seasonal variations. This allows for low levels of inventory. Um, you, can, you can work on just in time. So either vary capacity and have low inventory or keep constant capacity and have high levels of inventory. So the next part is on how you're going to manage demand and that's what we're going to focus on this lecture so we can the demand is connected to you can have market growth which is increased consumption from new or existing customers so we can attract new customers and this essentially increases the overall demand and firms demand increases and this is a win-win situation for everybody in this market and the second part, you can, you can increase your market share by stealing market share. Customers substitute other firms or products for your product, right? Overall demand remains the same. And then the firm's demand can increase if you can get other firms' pro, uh, demand into your product. So this is a win-loss situation where you're actually competing very fiercely. Now the third aspect has got nothing to do with external forces. This is forward buying. So customers who plan to buy a few months later move up their purchases to present. 
So overall demand remains the same. Firm's demand remains the same here. So essentially, let's assume that you as a customer were planning to uh, go to the dentist uh, in January or February, and then you have your uh, flexible spending accounts are, you know, you, you have a use it or lose it account that is this year, and you need to spend that money this year. So you go to the doctor and buy the medical products in December, which means that you will not go in January and February. And this is called forward buying. So we can actually offer promotions which will either increase the market share, it will allow you to steal market share and influence forward buying. And these promotions we are going to talk about is price discounts. So there is the impact of promotion on demand. And while if demand increases, especially if it makes it more um, if it creates a huge spike in demand, you have to look at the cost of holding inventory because the more like, more expensive it is, uh, the more careful you have to look at when you're going to offer this promotion. You also have to look at cost of changing the level of capacity. So if you're creating, uh, you have to decide whether you're going to create a spike in demand or whether you're smoothing the demand out. And finally, you, it is important to focus on product margins. That is product margins is for each unit, how much profit you're going to make. That is the revenue, the selling price minus the cost price per unit. So let's look at each timing of each promotion. So if you have high forward buying, that is a huge percentage of people will, because of your promotion, will actually move forward their sales. This favors promotion during low demand periods. And we'll talk about why, what is this low demand? So if you are, let's take an example of low demand. This is your happy hour. Happy hour tries to pull people from let's say coming in at peak periods about seven or eight o'clock when you don't have any tables available to maybe 4.30 or five where there's lots of tables available. And that's an example of forward buying, using happy hour to pull, move some of that demand and flatten the curve. If you have a high ability to steal market share, this favors promotion during peak demand periods. So if you can steal a lot of market share, you would offer the promotion between Thanksgiving and New Year where everybody, that's the peak demand period. And if you offer a discount, maybe you, you, people will come to you instead of your competitor. High ability to increase overall market, that is to grow the market. This also favors promotion during peak pr demand period. If you have a high margin, that is, there is a huge difference between the cost of making the product and actually the selling price. Uh, let's take your Apple product, for example. This favors promotion during peak demand period because when you do peak demand, your costs increase because you're storing more inventory or wearing capacity, but you have this high margin to buffer that increase in costs. But if you have very low margins, very tight difference between the cost of production and actually the selling price, then it favors promotion during low demand periods. If you have high manufacturer holding costs, that is the, the manufacturer, when they store inventory, it has high holding costs. This favors promotion during low demand periods. If you have high costs of changing capacity, this favors promotion during low demand periods. If you have high retailer holding costs, this decreases the forward buying by the retailer. And that makes sense. Let's assume that holding costs is high for the retailer. They're not going to buy more because storing inventory is expensive for them. And finally, if you have a high promotion elasticity of the customer, that is how sensitive the customer is to promotion, this also decreases forward buying by the retailer. So for sales and operations planning, 
we are going to look at an example. This is the same example we used in the aggregate planning chapter. Here is your demand forecast and here are your costs. So the first step, of course, is to create that aggregate plan, which we have already done in the last lecture. So we will then focus on how we are going to deal with um, the solution and how we are going to add sales promotion to that aggregate plan, the optimized aggregate plan. So here was the original solution. We had 422,000. Uh, total revenue was this, 640,000. Profit was 217,340. We had seasonal inventory, average flow time. You were producing 2,600 units from time periods one to three and 2,560 from four to six. Number of workers was given and there was some stock out and you did do some subcontracting. So the question is, when are you gonna offer this promotion? How much? So let's assume you have a discount of $1, which reduces the price from $39 to from $40, right? So you're going to, you used to have $40 and now you're going to $39. And let's assume there is a 10% increase in demand and a 20% forward buy for the next two months. Now this it will be given to you. This will be given to you. Uh, or if in, in, when you're working, this is something you're going to estimate. So should we offer the discount in January, which is the lowest demand period, or in April, which has the highest demand period? So let's go through this with Excel. So let's start with sales promotion in January. And when you do sales promotion in January, we have to adjust the demand. So we know that 10% of the demand increases from 1600. There's a market increase of 10% and then 20% forward buying. So February and March kind of move into January. That's why we have 1600 multiplied by 1.1. This is 110% plus February's demand multiplied by 20% because 20% of this demand goes up here. And then March's demand multiplied by 20%, which makes January's demand shoot up to 3,000 uh, units. Now, February and March then drop, right, to 80% because they lose 20%. So you're going to multiply this by 80% to get your new demand. And this is your new demand forecast. And you can see how you have flattened the curve. So you had this going up like this and now you're flattening the curve so that you don't have too much fluctuation all right so let's stop right here and then we will move into excel with this problem so here we have our old aggregate plan uh, it is already we've already run solver through it we have optimized it and we have our final solution, right? So the first thing to do is to copy this. So we have the original as it is. Let's not touch the original. And so here we are doing a sales and operations plan. And remember we have 10% increase in market share and 20% forward buying for the next two months and we are going to essentially start with the $39 the, the discount is $1 of for demand here and we will start with the basic formula here 1.1 plus now remember go back to the original 20% of this plus 20% of this, right? So this becomes your, and this is 80% and you're going to have 80%. And that's really all you have to do. And now you have to rerun your model. So you got to optimize it again. 
so that will give you the solution for this and with this you're pretty much done so you end up with cost of 422 uh, which uh, is actually dropped from your previous aggregate plan your total revenue has increased because you're selling if you look at how much you're selling your demand is 1660 whereas in the old one was about 1600 okay so um, here we go and let's go back and talk about it with the PowerPoint slides so let's look at the results and do a comparison uh, your total costs so your total cost dropped by $580 and your revenue increases um, by $3,400. And this makes perfect sense because when you flatten the demand, you're probably reducing uh, inventory uh, and your sales increases, of course, a little bit, not too much, but your demand does increase because you have a 10% increase in demand, right? even though it is at the lowest demand period. So your seasonal inventory drops, as I said, you know, we drop about average inventory goes down about 400 units. So therefore less inventory costs, your average flow time, things are going through your system faster. Um, it drops by about 0.15 months. Um, you are increasing production, number of workers are there. Your stock out is, there is a little bit more of a stock out and then subcontract these things increase but the reduction here and then increased revenue more than make up for that so the next step is uh now before we go into the next step let's look at let's go back to excel and let me show you um it is also possible to compare these total costs for each one. So if you look at this here, your layoff cost was 8,000. That's dropped to 7,500. Your regular time has gone up, but your inventory costs have dropped dramatically. Your stock out costs, as you can see. So you can actually compare each one and see which one's gone up, which one's gone down, and you can make a little graph out of that. Uh, and present that so that that's also another option so let's go back to our presentation and here we are now going to look at promotion in april so remember april has the highest demand so first we try to flatten the curve by increasing by offering a price discount and getting people from the high demand area to move to January so we can have a flatter curve but now we are going to what we are going to do is we're going to increase this so that we can surge in the market uh, and this is often when you're trying to do a market expansion you're trying to capture more market you're being very aggressive um, this is when you do a, a sales promotion in April so here we have a 10% increase here 10% of 3800 is a lot more than 1600 and 20% forward buy from these two months of May and June so you can see your April now goes up to 5060 and May drops to 1760 and 1760 so you can see that now instead of flattening the curve we have made the curve a more sharper which will force us to increase our costs our inventory costs will go up because we would need to manage that capacity right uh, and so a lot of the costs will go up and what we are hoping for is that the increased sales revenue more than gives us the the increase in costs kind of so therefore we end up with more profit so your demand now goes up to 16,380 right and let's go and look at the excel file uh, before we um, look at the answers um, and the Excel file isn't anything different than you have done before. So let's go ahead and look at the Excel file. So how are we going to go back to the original aggregate plan? Move, copy, right? 
And so this is SOP. Let's look at this is two. Your April is time for this goes to 39. And you are going to multiply this times 1.1. This is going to be multiplied by 20% this is going to be multiplied by 20%. So May and June, you're taking 20% of it. Here, May will now drop to 80% of that demand and June will drop to 80% of demand. And as you notice, your demand goes up to 16,380. And when you run this, you get your results. And if you want to compare it, you end up with more layoffs drop, your regular time shoots up because you're going to work more. Um, you have a lot more inventory, your stock out increases, your subcontracting increases, and your production increases. So let's go back to and compare the slides. Here we go. Let's look at the answers. Um, we have Total cost, which increases by 16,260 from the original. Your revenue does increase by over 10,000, but it's not enough to really compensate for the increase in costs. And so you end up with the profit dropping by about $6,000. Your seasonal inventory increases, average flow time remains the same. Your production has increased Number of workers increase, stock out increases, subcontracting increases. And so overall, because of the increase in cost, this time promotion in April from a profit perspective does not make sense. Now, this might be your entire strategic goal and you might be perfectly uh, willing to uh, accept this loss so that you can increase your market share, right? You can increase your demand. So you just can't look at this from a pure profit perspective. So let me quickly summarize a 1%, $1 discount with 10% increase in demand and 20% forward buy. If you offer the discount in January and you spread the demand by flattening the curve, this results in reduced cost, increased revenue, and more profit. It doesn't shoot up the demand that high, but because it cuts costs, the focus is really on cutting costs. It results in less inventory, faster flow time. If you do the discount in April, it results in increased costs, but also results in increased revenue, and the demand goes up much larger. So, if the demand goes up more than the increase in cost, then that results in higher profit. Otherwise, it will actually result in lower profit and you end up with more inventory. And so in this particular case, given that we don't know much about the overall strategy of this firm, if we look at it from a pure profit motive, the discount in January might be a better option. Now, what I would suggest is um, let's look at the same problem. What I would suggest when you go home, look at the same problem and look at it from the same dollar discount with increases uh, in 50% in market share and then 20% forward by. So essentially what we are doing is here, we are saying, hey, the market share um, is going to increase a lot more. And you might find then April might be a good idea then. The second option is to increase this dollar amount. Instead of a $1 discount, let's look at a $5 or $10 discount. And then you can see how the difference in the, the impact um, might make it more profitable to do it in January as compared to April or vice versa. So it's very important. And I would suggest to we, us going back to that chart. So remember this chart we looked at, high forward buying, high ability to steal market share. These two pretty much get to be the same. Increase over mar market, high margin, low margin, high manufacturers holding cost, 
high cost of changing capacity, high retailers holding costs. Well, we don't do this. Um, so we could actually look at multiple examples here and look at the impact of how it affects our profitability. So with this, we finish sales and operations planning and we are done with this module. Mm -hmm.